Hello, I'm Tommy the Keyblade Master, here with another review, this time on Mario Kart 64. Normally I'm going to wait till Mondays to do a Mario game, however with Mario Kart 8 coming out this Friday, I decided to go take a look at some of the old Mario Kart games. Now I don't have any way to hook up my Super Nintendo for some of the original Mario Kart's footage, so I decided to go to the Virtual Console for Mario Kart 64. Besides, it's one of my favorite Mario Karts anyways, and it's definitely worth taking a look at. So why did Mario Kart become so popular? Well, unlike most racing games before it, that kind of went like this. <laughs> and here is how racing is done with the Mario Kart 64 when you have a slip up. Get out of the way! You suck! What makes Mario Kart unique is you run over item boxes, which gives you unique power-ups. You've got banana peels, you've got shells to throw at opponents, you've got mushrooms that give you speed-ups, you've got stars that give you invincibility, you'll even have to get lightning bolts that shrink players. While Super Mario Kart definitely had a lot of items, this is the game where the items really started to shine with the triple shell and the Super Mushroom being able to be procured. The graphics are pretty good for a game that's now over 17 years old. Sure, some of the artwork and the stages are a little old. You can definitely tell that those hills over there are very sharp edged. And some of the character sprites are a little blurry compared to what they would be nowadays and they are not exactly well animated, but they get the job relatively done it doesn't look like a game as old as it does. It's definitely not ugly. It performs well. There's very little slowdown. All in all, Mario Kart 64, despite its age, is still going strong. The music in this game is great. A lot of courses have good music, but you can't beat the Rainbow Road soundtrack. And while Super Mario 64 was the first console Mario game to use voice acting, Mario Kart 64 brought us a lot of the side characters we get. Wario, I'm a Wario. I'm a gonna win. Luigi, I'm a Luigi. Number one. and even Toad. I'm the, best. the first two voices are very memorable and funny and have stuck to it today. That last one, well... Yahoo! Now onto the gameplay of Mario Kart 64. Um, like the original Super Mario Kart and most of them afterwards, your single player consists of the GP Cups and the Time Trials. In GP you race four races, with each with three laps. And the goal of GP is to get more than fourth place in each race and each time you get more than fourth you'll get points first place gives you the most points obviously whatever point place you are it'll be the type of trophy you have in other words if you have the second to most points you win silver most points gets gold um, unlocking gold trophies does unlock a few extras in this there's not as many as there are in modern mario games but there's still a few nice extras here worth checking out. The time trial mode is just that. It's you racing around a course for three laps by your lonesome. The idea is to try to get the best score you can. The top five scores are saved for each track as well as the best lap. You can also save ghost data if you're playing the N64 version and have a memory card inserted to the back of the controller. Now this isn't included in the Wii version. It doesn't allow you to emulate a memory card, unfortunately. However, to me, it's not a big deal. I never really save too much Ghost Data on those memory cards anyways. It's multiplayer where Mario Kart 64 really shines. Two players can go at it in a GP, and it's a whole lot harder when you have a, another player aiming at you with weapons and stuff. Usually, though, the same solid power-up distribution from single player is given to the second player. Well, usually. 
Besides, when you can screw around with your friends this much by causing things like this to happen, it's always a good time. I'm Wario. I'm in 8th place. Peach is gonna die. You can also annoy your friends by doing this. Just be careful on how you use it. There is also battle mode. Now this is more fun if you have 3 and 4 players because the courses on this one are so huge. But 2 players can still have a good time. Um, the idea is you have these arena tracks. In order to win you have to blast each other's balloons off by hitting them with weapons. It's pretty fun. With an awesome single player campaign t with, loaded with tons of items and kooky characters and great tracks and even a few unlockables and some two player mode that is absolutely excellent with uh, two player GP in battle, do I recommend Mario Kart 64 for the N64? Well, the answer is surprisingly no. Yeah, that's right, I don't recommend the Nintendo 64 version. Mainly because if you go out and try to play it on a 15 year old N64 controller with a busted analog stick, and a lot of N64 controllers analog sticks did not age very well, it's kind of like go-karting with a club attached to the wheel. It sucks. <laughs> I do, however, recommend the Virtual Console version of Mario Kart 64. It has a load of controller options. All of them are better than the N64 controller. The original Nintendo Wii can use the GameCube controller, which is the best way to play this game in my opinion. Um, if you own an original Wii, the GameCube slots are located on the side or on the top, depending on how you position your console. If you own a Wii Slim or a Wii U, you'll have to buy a classic controller, which is sold separately from the Wii Remote, but it plugs into the back of the Wii Remote and lets you play these games. Definitely a better way to play than the N64, but not as good as the GameCube in my opinion. I give Mario Kart 64 for the Wii Virtual Console a 5 out of 5. It's definitely worth $10.